Alright animators, Carmen here trying this video one more time because something keeps going sideways and it, I keep having to restart. So let's try it again. Here we go. So what we're looking at this one is, so far we've been looking at having a bow, ball bounce off of a hard surface like a floor. Okay, like a, flo like a concrete floor or a tile floor or a wood floor or some, some type of surface that is not yielding. Okay, so what I want to look at this time is what happens when you bounce it off of a yielding object. Okay, you can think of it like a trampoline or you can treat it like jello. Okay, each one is going to have kind of its own reaction and how you make it bounce off of that object is how you make it bounce. But it's going to be a case of not only does the ball does, does the material of the ball itself affect how the bounce looks but the material of the object that it's bouncing against is also going to have an effect and require additional animation. All right, so to get started, you want to make sure that you are starting on the layer that you intend to start on. In this case, I'm going to start on the basketball layer. So I'm going to click, um, just make sure that that layer is highlighted blue like so. And then I'm going to drag this on over. Now, here is the quick pro tip that I actually covered in the last video and or in the last several videos and forgot to do this time. If when you open up this page, it's too big, you're, you're seeing way more of this, like you can't see the edges of the stage. The easy fix for that is you go up here to view and you choose magnification and you choose fit in window. That's automatically going to make it so that it will fit. I went down a little from there because I wanted some space over to the outside to drag the objects into. And the file that I'm starting with is the exact same file I had you do the last assignment on. 7-1 different bounce weights. It works for this just fine. Okay. So to start, I'm on the basketball layer. I've dragged the basketball out into the middle of the area. You probably want to start it up here. Okay. Uh, so that you're, you've got it dropping just like you did in the other one. So that it's following the same basic idea, but it's going to act differently in this one. So to create my substance that is yielding, because I'm not just going to make it bounce into the floor, because then, then we can't see it as viewers. So I'm going to choose rectangle. I'm going to choose a rectangle tool, and I already went and picked the colors on this. I've got kind of a greenish blue fill color, and then the stroke color is a dark... Um, you know, I'm just going to make it black. There we go. All right. So that's what these two stand for. Stroke is the outline. Fill is the interior part. All right. And you can make it the color that you want. Actually, I guess I'm changing it. Okay. There we go. So I'm on the rectangle tool and I'm going to go ahead and draw a box in here. Now, this is a case where you do want the outline. In order to do the path effect that we're going to do, you need the outline on it. So it does need to have a stroke. Okay, so make sure that that is included. If it's not, you can see over here on the right-hand side, you can go, oh, I need to add a stroke. All right, now, when the ball drops on it, okay, so let me go back to the selection tool and choose the basketball. So I've got the basketball coming down, and if the basketball drops onto it, um, I want that to give. So that means it's going to go lower than the surface that it is right now. So let's say it's going to land right there. Well, in order to make that transition happen, so just like when you did squash and stretch, you um, went to the free transform tool, okay? Let me try that again. You went to the free transform tool. Come on. There you go. So on the free transform tool with nothing selected, if I mouse over to the edge of this shape, you'll see that arrow comes up. I have to be right on that outline. You'll see that arrow comes up with a little curved uh, line to it. That is going to allow me to modify the path so I can take and bring this down. All right, so that is the ball hitting this object and yield and it's and it's yielding. Okay, so same thing. I'm going to target this layer and I'm going to press F6 for the next frame. And let me turn on onion skin so I can see what the previous frame was at. Then I need to click away from it, click on the ball and let's bring it up. Okay, and then same thing. When I mouse over the edge of that, I can bring that up to match. Okay, so over the course of a few frames, you're probably going to end up with this thing coming up and it down, and you'll probably be animating this as well. Okay, so this is gonna wobble. Whoops, 
So this, this surface will end up wobbling as the ball bounces up and down. Now, different objects have different weights to it. So when a bowling ball hits it, what's that going to do? Is it going to make it bounce less? Is it going to make it bounce more? Is it going to go right through the bottom? Don't make it go through the bottom. It'll look weird. Um, and then same thing with a beach ball. Does it, it go less? Does it go more because it's so big? Okay, what is it going to do? Is it going to bounce up higher when it's done? And then it's a matter of deciding, is this going to be more like a trampoline or is it going to be more like a jello? Jello is going to absorb the energy and make it bounce less. A trampoline might make it bounce higher. I don't know. You play around with it. You experiment. You can also Google it. Look up examples. Find reference images of how objects bounce against things differently. Um, you could put uh, ball, ball bounce against a squishy object. I don't know. Um, you Google, you find, you look up whatever references you need for this. Okay, but what I want to see is each one of these objects bouncing against um, something that is a yielding surface. All right, that is your next part of this project.